Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're on episode number 41. My name is Craig Perales. I'm the man that makes it through on the rainiest and stormiest of days. Major Montemayor. You think we'll make it to 50? Oh, we have to at this point. At this point, I'd be mad if we don't get to 60. I say we cancel at 49. 49? Four, what about 49 and a half? 49 and a half. Uh, why? You don't think we'll make it to 50? Years old now. Uh, uh, we? No. <laughs> So anyway, guys, you know we like to drink beers around here, so pause it now if you can. Go pick up something tasty to drink, and then maybe pick this one up. This is... Now, Jabstab, I know you threw a couple of recommendations at us. We didn't get a chance to grab them because Andrew actually um, grabbed these last night. I believe your comment was earlier today. Ooh, sorry. This is... And you know we like the Kona Brewing Company. Congratulations again. Again, yeah, shout out. He's the winner, and he recommended some beers. But Andrew picked out the Kanaha, is how I'm going to pronounce it, version the Blonde Ale of the Kona Brewing Company. Now, this sits at a 4.2. Um, how did this grab your eye? Um, I'm loving it. Ale with tropical mango added. You just saw another Kona and you're like, hey, why not? I didn't know there was more than one Kona. I just, I've always seen the big wave and I was going through the place. There's like a wheat one, a lager, and then there's this one. I almost grabbed the lager, but then I seen blonde. And when we went to the uh, yard house, that's what we had was the Blonde Ales and it was really good. So You know, I just saw it. That there's Hawaii actually ingrained in the glass. I didn't think about it until you were running your hand over. Well, right I kept now. feeling it. I'm like, like, what is this braille? <laughs> and I go to look at it. I'm like, oh wait, this is the goddamn island. That would be a pretty cool braille on a bottle. We yeah. should do that. Trademark, that don't take. So, yeah, liquid aloha. So that is the beer we're drinking, and we will get around to some of the other choices. I promise you that. But guys, on today's episode, like the thumbnail suggests, is that a couple of things are heading downhill. Some may be coming up more than the others, and we're talking about. E3 today, and we're talking about GameStop. And first on the plate is the E3 official cancellation. Now, I'm not going to dive into the statement because we all knew it was coming. The writing was on the wall. But essentially, Entertainment Software Association, the ESA, which is the organizer for E3, has officially stated that due to the ever-impending coronavirus scare that's going on, it has been officially canceled. Now, this is a show that's been going on since May 11th, 1995. So this is the first time this show's ever even seen a damper like this. I mean, I Andrew, do what wanna, do you think? I was going to say, I do want to jump in and say oh, that hey. they, uh, this is a cancellation. It is not like GDC where GDC says not they're postponing to later this summer. This says they're not doing it at all. And I don't know if it's so much I... to do. I'm sure there is the Corona scare too, but with everybody else dropping out and then them cutting that company, um, the 8-Bit Gaming winner who's actually doing their floor mapping and stuff like that, then maybe that sh they weren't going to be ready anyways. Yeah, and one of the things that a lot of people don't um, kind of realize, or at least most don't, is the ESA is funded. Um, almost 50% almost of their annual intake comes from E3. So when something like this canceled... It just spells trouble because now what's going to happen with these guys? These guys are the lobbying body in Congress for uh, you know, a portion of the gaming industry. So you even saw it back in 2017, right? We've been seeing E3 and Andrew and I talk about this. It's been slowly dipping. So in 2017 is when they opened it up to the public. And once they started taking in that revenue, they saw a 30% boost in attendance. Now, we've been talking about and, and clearly, you know, Andrew will probably dive into more of the Xbox stuff is there. Everything's moving to a digital show. And that's what E3 is kind of suggesting they're going to try. But when something like vendors and attendance and companies paying for spots and setting up booths is, you know, physical money coming in that pays for you. I don't know how a digital setup supports them if this was 50 percent of their annual take. I think that is part of their problem now, too, is, one, I don't think that they could have gone on with the show this year. But, two, yeah, the fact that they have canceled, there's no point in them doing a digital. Why would someone else pay to be on their digital platform mm -hmm. when Xbox, actually, Phil Spencer, has already come out to say that they are going to be doing their own digital event? So why not do that? To. That would be something I would look forward more to is the digital event. And like Craig was saying, once they open it to the public, I know that that means good for people like you and me who would want to do that. But I have seen a lot of the other side. I mean, me and him are insiders or anything like that. But there's lots of other people that I follow that say that's actually kind of started the decline of E3. Because there's way too many people. You can't do anything. It's hard to do anything. So instead of it being more for the press and getting in there and getting the info and getting these things, it's just a fucking big chaotic mess of people. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those things where, like Andrew was just kind of hinting at, if if if... Xbox does their digital thing, Nintendo does their digital thing, and Ubisoft jumps into this, and all these companies do it, then yeah, what does E3 have the show for? There is no there's no reason to expect it, because why? the only thing we could hope is that they get early access to show something, 
But why would they? Why wouldn't yeah. Xbox want to reveal something on their platform versus an E3 unless, you know, and I, it wouldn't make sense for E3 to buy that, right? Because at this point, they're losing money. So it's a step backwards for E3. And this is, like Andrew was saying, you know, it's a cancellation. This isn't a pushback. So I am nervous that we're ever going to see E3 in the scale or scope that it ever was. And they may do something digitally from now on, or at least under that brand or moniker, E3. But it's never going to be the same, and it sucks that we never got a chance to go experience it. I don't think that it will, depending on how it does this year. So if everyone else's comes out, Xbox is it's smashing numbers, it's a lot cheaper, mm-hmm. it's this, it's that, then, you know, why wouldn't they do it next year? Why wouldn't they do their own digital event away from E3, where people are only talking about Xbox, the focus is only on Xbox, it's not competing with all these other games, because we already knew PlayStation isn't going to be there, so they're going to have to do their own sort of event. So maybe that, I mean, that's, the writing's been on the wall for a while, and maybe that's just it, and that's, maybe this is its time. Yeah, one of the things I'm, I, I got to stress that I'm, I'm disappointed if it does never, you know... Um, just so we didn't get to go. Yeah, yeah. show again, well, that's one, but... You know, unlike these other things that are getting pushed back, there's tons of, like, Comic-Cons and stuff like that spread throughout the calendar year. We don't get too many pure video game ones. And E3 was the New York, San Diego Comic-Cons of them all. So if you were ever hoping to go to the biggest event, you know, outside of going to Germany, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to go to these big game events where you can bump into people, cosplay, play your games. You know, it's always, it'll, there's still things out there, but it's they'll just be on the smallest scale. Like, it sucks at that big juggernaut is going to be gone or is it you know a lot of people were done with e3 a few years ago i mean there's a few people that have stopped watching it so for guys like us who love everything gaming and never want to see something fail this one is really just that's the icing on the cake that's e3 is done i'll pour it out for you yeah then nothing else is really safe if this thing isn't going to make it but um, if there, is there anything else you want to dive into on actually, that, whether it be the Xbox Digital, the Ubisoft Digital? I actually wanted to ask you, would you prefer, and this question for anyone, would you prefer, again, like we were talking about, would you prefer a digital event? So I know before we were kind of talking about just some mixed with E3, but if E, would you prefer just E3 go at this point? I don't know what do E3 would events? do. What are they going to, like, I would, I prefer if they, well, because what I see them turning Let's say E3 comes back next year and does the same thing they've always been doing versus these standalone digital events, what would you prefer? I would prefer them to come back. I, I just don't know if they can maintain Just to it. go? Just to go. Just because I like watching. I like seeing more. I do like I, taking the I day I like off seeing and... ground floor stuff, and you don't get that with the digital event. Like, it's not, it doesn't take much money out of Xbox Pocket or Microsoft Pocket to, to show a couple of things and them showing off hardware, them doing a nice, you know, monologue or, you know, some dialogue over a scene. But the point of E3 was ground floor work. And I like seeing I did people like play in booths. Floor. I like seeing the shows that happen after a reveal. And I don't see... And, and what they, E3 would do is since you had so many shows, you would be able to get them all in one place where now your vision's... You know, your attention's going to be divided amongst many things, which is a good way because I like having more things over the year. But I do like seeing physical things. I like seeing people there. I, like seeing I people do like that, watching the interviews it. in between whatever. So I would have to prefer it be back too. So... I mean, it is what it is, and uh, we all saw it coming, but not much we can do about it now. I'd like to give someone a bad interview. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Ooh." laughs> I don't think I'd freeze up in front of like a live crowd if we were to do something, but I think if I was interviewing somebody, I'd probably fuck that up. Well, let's start getting... We need to start setting up like um, Skype live reviews with fans or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Get their intake. Or, you know, eventually that'll branch out to bigger and more named people. Uh, what do you hate most about the show? Well, all of it. You know, these two guys <laughs> act like they know something about the industry. Uh, so that is it for E3 Cancellation, guys. Let us know in the comments your opinions. Do you do you care that it's gone? Is it something, you know, once it's gone, we're going to miss it? Um, or did they shoot themselves in the foot? Because it's been declining. You know, they haven't adapted into what, you know, modern day um, shows and speculation has been. And that's why they've been tanking over the last five to ten years. So... That is it for E3. Let's get into another thing that's kind of slowly falling downhill. Or, I didn't expect to see anything like that. Or at all. is it coming into a resurgence slash resurrection? So GameStop, uh-huh. guys, as you know, has been slowly declining, but they've recently announced on March 9th that Reggie Fizeme and retired Nintendo of America figurehead CEO CEO is stepping out and has been now on the board of directors. Now, before we dive more into who else joined them or that, initial thoughts of that. 
I was, that, no, I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, no, that kind of came out of nowhere. And I personally love Reggie. I think he's like a great person. I know I've watched a lot of his interviews. He's always said that I love a challenge. And it seems like he definitely is someone who could lead a company, if anything, back from the brink of something like this. Because I don't... I mean, Nintendo's always been big, but I don't think they really... I mean, Shigeru Miyamoto is a, a facial figure. Everybody knows him. They recognize him. But I don't think outside of him they really had anyone else until... Reggie, and I think Reggie would be more approachable and, you know, maybe because of the language barrier, too, than, you know, Shigeru. I don't see Shigeru and all these things, whereas you saw Reggie, there's memes about Reggie, and he's all about it. And he was even on Twitter posted that the industry needs a healthy and vibrant GameStop, and he's looking forward to the challenge. Yeah. And so that, to me, I mean, because it's, he could have retired. I'm sure he's oh, not, I'm sure he's making money. buku bucks for this. I really wonder if he approached them or they approached him saying, like, hey, we're in trouble right now. Do you think you can turn the ship around? Because I don't think he would just jump on a sinking ship for the yeah, check. I don't think he's that yeah. kind of person. But if he really thinks that there's a way to turn this around, and I hope that there is, I think he'd be the person to do it yeah. for sure. And I never thought in a million years like I would ever think to see him there, but I think he can do it. Especially after seeing him step out into the Game Awards, he would. I think that was a soft comeback into the video game, you know, um, um, attention. And I just thought, my name is Reggie. I mean, I kick ass and I'm going to take names. I mean, the guy is all time. He can explain a lot to many of people. And one of the things that he did was um, he kept Nintendo afloat when when Xbox and Sony were going after these big, you know, um, power driven systems. I mean, he was the guy that kind of led the flagship with, you know, let's take a step back. He did the Wii, you know, that did um, innovations with, you know, motion controls that we've never saw before with, and it, and it hit an audience that wasn't, you know, intentionally meant for. It's best selling console that generation, folk. Yeah, he technically. Was, he was there when they were launching out the Nintendo DS, when everyone was expecting a, a new Game Boy to come out. It, you know, he was there when it was dual screen and, and you know, touch screen. And so he's been, and he been there when a couple bombers and he was, you know, the Wii U. But this guy knows how to make things work and he knows how to sell it, which is more importantly. So... Jumping into who's actually coming on with him is Bill Simon, who's the former CEO of Walmart US, and James, if I'm pronouncing it right, Semanzik. Uh, uh, he was the former CEO of PetSmart. Now, you look at those two companies, right? What what does it have to do with anything gaming? Nothing necessarily, but they're both two companies in an age where you're losing Kmart's and Blockbusters. You, once upon a time, juggernauts, no one's talked about a problem with Walmart. No one said anything with PetSmart, and these guys were in the age when those things were in the decline. So you put that triangle Two of the together. Yeah. Brands outside you put of... those three together. I'm not necessarily saying they're going to come up with something that's revolutionary, but they've got to come up with, or they probably most likely will come up with something that at least keeps it afloat for a tad bit longer. Yeah. Um, between the three of them, I think I, I don't see why they couldn't come up with something because I think people are willing to go to GameStop. And maybe it is just the experiences. Because, like, you know, like, I, we read horror stories all all the time online. There's tons of people with their horror stories. I personally love our GameStop here. I enjoy going there. I went there today. I love going and looking around. I don't ever have any sort of issues, and I never once had a problem there. Yeah, GameStop, what, well, a lot of people forget this, too. Back in, like, the early 2000s when GameStop was kind of pulling, like, a WWE move. They, they were buying out all their competition, so all your old, like, what's it, like, EB games or something like that they're buying up those spots and converting them and this is like pre like internet age so they thought they were taking foothold in a market that they thought was going to last forever and it's slowly over time as we're seeing the way the internet works it didn't but oddly enough unlike a kmart or a blockbuster gamestop has held on as long as it has and i think it's impressive that they've lasted this long but they're finally starting to see the ship sink and uh and it's sooner than they probably think. And the fact that you're getting, like Andrew said, I don't think uh, Reggie's taking a paycheck to take a paycheck. I think he sees something in this that is worth saving, or if not, maybe something that's untouched. Because GameStop have been doing their stores. They've been kind of gimmicky. They've been turning into nostalgia stores with pops. They've been doing these game lounges, but nothing's actually stuck. So I am curious of what do you do? Yeah, I don't know what the answer is to that either. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know if Reggie does. Yeah, I like what ours is. I don't know about the whole game launch thing. I don't go to GameStop to hang out there for hours at a time. But I would like it if ours had it. But GameStop you, are usually just smaller stores inside a mall or inside a strip mall or something like that. I mean, it's rare when you see a standalone GameStop building. And those would be the only ones I can think of that would even have space to do a, a lounge. I don't think I've ever even seen one. Yeah, <laughs> they're... Uh, 
They are rare and they are hard to find in this day and age. But with that being said, um, I think GameStop's last gas, or at least the last gem they're holding on to, is they're waiting for this year's end of PS5 and Xbox. So they're their whole thing has always been used um, merchandise, and they've been waiting for things like this, where the biggest sales are going to be PS5 Series X, and people they're waiting for all the trade-ins of people's Xbox Ones and Ss. But how long does that push you? That might get you to 2021, 20, you know, first quarter, maybe second. But they got to have a bigger plan than selling new consoles that's going to gas out past the year 2021. I just don't know. So that's the thing is it's a dying company because, yeah, people don't want to shop there or do whatever there. But I don't know where you're going to go to get your games afterwards that's a better alternative. Walmart. Because I know there's a lot of people bitch and moan like, oh, they rip you off on your game. Well, Walmart doesn't even give you anything for trading in your games at all, let alone a discount towards anything. Or have anyone to talk to. Yeah, I don't know who it is that's around you that you think is going to be better, but I guarantee you it's not. Yeah, the only thing I like is when Andrew or CN point out to my attention, because I miss it every year, is when Target does... The buy two get one or what? Is, whatever. Yeah, buy two games yeah. get one at full price, <laughs> and that's yeah. and that's once a year, maybe maybe twice. So um, again, did you write it off five years ago? Like some people, are you holding on to a good one in your neighborhood? Like we have. It, it, I don't want to see GameStop leave, I, I, but I am. I didn't see this coming. I, I'm super impressed that three big names like this are stepping onto this board of directors because that just shows a little more backbone and a little more faith that they're not just waiting to die, that they're struggling to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that he was very expensive to pick up. So the fact that they're willing to spend that money and pick up someone like Reggie, I think really shows the initiative like, hey, we need to rebrand. We want to do this. this you know, it's not just here for the money. I mean, it is there for the money, but it's something more than that because I'm sure Reggie was not cheap. Yeah, it'd be sweet if he took it pro bono and he took all of his money on the back end after like an X amount of plan if they get out of resurgence because he's got fuck you money. He yeah, I mean, like I'm guaranteed whatever amount, but if I can turn this fucking, if I can cut the crust off this shit sandwich, <laughs> like how, you know, what are we talking here? Since wheeze. <laughs> but, uh, I, I would like to know what anyone's GameStop situation is because, I mean, we live here in Arizona, so we only have the one GameStop, and they're actually thriving. I go in there, and I actually ask them weird questions about their sales and stuff like that all the time. I don't know how often you do, but, I mean, I don't know what the situation's like in Vegas, which we should maybe check that out when we go out there, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm curious as to where ever anyone else lives, what is the GameStop situation like in your area? Yeah, I, I've, I've when I was more doing more, a lot more traveling in Arizona, I... Would stop at the Kingman one. I think the Kingman one's going under. And they had a really nice store compared to ours. I liked how big it was. I heard them and Havasu both. I, I would say, and the Havasu one, which I actually bought um, I bought these two games in the Havasu one. And that one's going under. And those are two, compared to our store, size and the layout, I think, look better than ours. But I asked I mean, them about that store, and they said that they just didn't meet their sales at all. Yeah. And that, Havasu was never even close to their sales ever. Yeah, so. And maybe that's just because that's like a California town or whatever they want to call that. <laughs> so maybe they had a higher thing that I had to get. But I guess this one here is killing it, is what they told me. So Yeah, so I hope ours stays Those around. Those are lying. Yeah, <laughs> like a liar. I hope ours stays around for a long time. And I do hope GameStop comes around because, again, once it's gone, it's gone. I don't want to talk about relics. I want to talk about thriving businesses and especially when it involves video games that like we go shop at hastings had way too much to handle you know and that's kind of what gamestop was turning into shirts toys pops uh you know all this crazy stuff so let's see what happens i mean these guys just jumped on board i think it's safe to say that we will see them into the second quarter of 2021 uh simply based like i was saying on the on the gas of next gen consoles for but, sure but even if these get pushed back i mean look at everything else is getting pushed back if this pushes back till 2021 we get series x and ps5 maybe they don't i think gamestop will still make it no matter what i hope so guys so with that being said andrew how much time are we making excellent time uh guys we've been playing a couple of the new games that have been out in the last week or so so we're going to give you guys our first impressions of them and then whether or not they're checking out i think the general consensus is yes Andrew, do you want to talk about what you've been playing, or do you want me to dive into what I've been playing? Um, I can go first. Okay. So, I've actually been playing... Yours is a little more meteor, so I'd rather yeah. give you more time. I've been uh, playing uh, Call of Duty Warzone, which actually dropped on the 10th, and surprisingly, you only got it a few hours early if you own Modern Warfare. It's actually a free-to-play game, so that's for anybody to download. So, perfect way to compete with something like Fortnite, perfect way to compete with something like PUBG, which you still have to pay for. And so far, just initial impressions... I'm, I'm loving it. I think it's absolutely great. I don't know if it's a PUBG replacer for me just yet, 
but it's got a lot of it that I like. It's a lot better than what Black Ops 4 was. The map, I have it on here, is called Verdansk. It's huge. So there's two different game modes, actually. There's the standard Battle Royale, which is 150 people. Teams of three, just scatter out, last person to live. Uh, they made some different changes to it. So you can find random weapons on uh, kind of the map everywhere, wherever it is that you're going. Or you can actually, there's like boxes that make like a weird, it's really loud humming noise. Hmm. And they'll be like blue, purple, gold. And that they'll give you better weapons out of them. And so you pull the weapons out of that. So it's no more finding weird sites or whatever. You're just finding the weapon as it stands and that's what you use. So far I actually haven't won one, unfortunately. But I'm still having a blast playing it. I think one of my favorite changes to it is when you die... You get sent to the Russian gulag. Yeah, and that's what I had. gulag. There's people above you, so you're down. You're you're up top, and you're watching down there. And you can throw like rocks at them and hit them, and it'll kind of like uh, distract someone. And you could like look away or whatever. If you get hit, it almost sounds, it feels like a gunshot. Nice. Like it seems like you're taking damage, but it's just one on one with a random weapon. So it could be a shotgun, pistols. Uh, they have like an auto shotgun in there. So either way, it's one-on-one or whoever gets the object in the middle first if you guys try to draw out the timer. And then if you win, you get thrown back into the map again. Nice. And so you just yeah, parachute right, back right, yeah. in. If you die, your team can actually, if you, you collect cash while you're playing, you can find them in boxes or just randomly strewn about, can actually buy your way back in. And so that'll parachute you back in too, which Sweet. is pretty cool. And then the other game mode's called Plunder. And that one's more like a... Uh, I, kind of like a death matches in a way. It's 30 minutes long and it's the first one to get to a million dollars or whoever has the most money as a team after that. And uh, the way you, again, you collect the money and what's in both of them, actually, I didn't bring it up, is there's contracts that you can do, which is pretty cool to get extra money. So one of them might be find this box, then it'll show you where the next dead drop is, the next dead drop is. Or one of my favorite ones is uh, you can open a box or a contract and it'll give you an assignment to kill another player on the map. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if it's range-based or if it's just anywhere on the map, but it shows you where the one player is at all times. Nice. And then on the other team, though, it tells you, your player is being hunted, you two guard him. So you can't see the other two, so if you're getting close and you're tracking this guy down, you might see the one dude, but you don't know where the other two are. Oh, very cool. So that was actually, like, really cool. That was one of my favorite things about it. Um, again, I, I like kinda, that. That's pretty sweet. I like the three team format. Again, 150 players. It doesn't seem like it takes too long. I'm actually really, really enjoying it. And one of my favorite things too is actually when you win, everybody sees you win. So you get pulled up to the helicopter, it zooms in on your player, and it'll say like Mandrew kills Zeus nine to eight. But then on the side it says in memoriam, and it has everybody who died. <laughs> While you were playing. Yes. So there there was like, I didn't realize how popular it was, but like when I was looking at it the other day, there was like 16 different like Trump, Trump, Donald Trump, something about Donald Trump while I'm playing. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But either way, at first I didn't notice it because I thought it was just, you know, standard. Oh, this guy built the game. This guy built the game, whatever. (laughs) But then Trump caught my eye. I was like, what? And then I started reading. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's all the different players who, you know, were in on the session. So I thought that was really badass. So that's way badass. So it sounds like this game is doing more than just last man surviving. Cause it, it, it's, I think it brought enough that yeah, it makes it's, it different. It's got to be hard enough for in a world full of these these um, you know these kind of battle royals to bring something new. And it sounds like they brought something at least new enough to be at least to pull you away from a game like PUBG, which was your, which was your go-to game for a while. That Gulag thing sounds badass. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like a loser's bracket. That gets a point that if you win, you get to come back out and you get a chance to still win the game. Oh, I love being up there and watching people. Oh, dude, that's or, awesome. I was playing with Christian and I'm like trying to tell him, I'm like, yeah, the guy's hiding on the other side because you can see your teammate if you both died on there too. And so I'm trying to guide him and I'm like throwing rocks. I'm like, he's right here throwing the rock where the guy is. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, I think the biggest thing and what I want to kind of maybe stress is important is the map is absolutely great. But I think where maybe people love Fortnite for it. I think PUBG's also kind of slacked for it. If they want this game to be big and kind of overtake the others, they need to offer variety. And they've already done it with the game mode. It's fun. It's fulfilling gameplay. But I think as long as they don't take 10 years, like to a map, one map a year, one map a year, then they could definitely, you know, even if it's two or three maps a year, eventually at some point you're up to six, whatever. Because I think on PUBG, I still only have like, four maps and i'm like oh man sometimes it just I, repetitive yeah and i'll end up playing one just go solo on that one for a while then go back to the original three and i think fortnite the map just changed 
but Fortnite's a different, a completely different juggernaut than what the other ones are. And I think it's just about keeping that freshness and just as long as you don't slag on the content, then that's where you're gonna be at. Yeah, and it sounds like the content is what they're bringing is good, and the fact that it's free, which this it surprised day, me. This I did not think of, it was. It's not. If you make a game that's that's battle royale in a world full of free, you're you're it's suicide. So the fact that they were able to take that concept and be like, let's just do it. But I gotta ask though, does this mean the end of a uh, is it blackout? What was the or or oh yeah, blackout. Is that, that yeah? Is that, I don't, or do I don't, they, is there a point to keep going with? Are they gonna keep going with two annual battle royales? And that was the thing too. That I was like, I don't understand why anyone would even go and pick that up because you still have to pay for that. I honestly thought that this was going to be something that you had. I knew it was coming out. I didn't know it was going to be free to play. I thought you would have to own, and it would make sense to own Modern Warfare. And this is a part of Modern Warfare. And it's not. So it's crazy because I was actually looking at some of the numbers and it said just in the first day alone, and this is for the people who bought the game, got it a few hours early, it, they had over 6 million concurrent players. Yeah. Just was, on the yeah. first day. I was reading so that. Was, that was pretty cool. I mean, it's not 50 million. It's not the same amount of people who bought Call of Duty Day 1, but still to drag someone away from something else so something months that's already after, successful. yeah, it's a crazy number. And, and I, do you think if it wasn't for the name Call of Duty and having the, you know, the strength that they have to do these game modes, so that would even have happened? Because you got to remember like things like Apex dropped out of nowhere with Respawn. And it took the world by storm, and it's still running strong. This one's not having as much concurrent players versus the other one, but do you think it would have had less if it wasn't a Call of Duty? I think it would have had less, and who knows what that tail would be like, because right now, currently, I think Apex is actually kind of, like, slagging down. And Call of Duty's going up. Losing. And so, I mean, especially with how... And I don't even think it's just the fact that it's a Call of Duty in name alone, but the fact that Modern Warfare was so well-received, and a lot of people love that game... Going based off of that, cool. But again, I don't know what you do with Blackout. If I was them, I would personally probably just include it. Hey, you can't shut it down because I, yeah, maybe they'll go, maybe Save they'll put some money on the next one. Yeah, but uh, everybody who bought that one, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, and that's what I'm saying. You can't make it. We're at the point where you can't make another one, and it costs money, especially now that their next one has been free. Like you can't go back for hey, go to Blackout and but pay another sixty dollars and and. And right, yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll do another one like that. I think that this is going to be like what PUBG is or like what Fortnite is. Now this is here, and they're just going to continue to add on, add on, add on, add on. And you look it. at the way the graphics look compared to like the Fortnite cartoony. No, it the, looks great. The PUBG kind of, you know, um, old, still old school PC looking. You got Call of Duty, it looks like Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty looks like Call of Duty, plays like Call of Duty, feels like Call of Duty. Surprisingly, haven't ever really ran into like any lag or any sort of like problems where i feel like oh man it, it's just not running right it runs absolutely great nice you can't ex you can't hope or expect for any more than that on a new game that's coming out to grab new players so that sounds like exciting exciting so i'm waiting to play it i've just ugh, backlogs are for days yeah. and i just love that i've, I've been seeing you guys jump on more and more so i'm like all right i, I gotta jump in and grab a game with these guys uh, there's nothing more satisfying than like um oh, man i fucking died now i just gotta kick this dude's ass in the gulag and get back and out he's back so anything else you add, add on that no i'm done i definitely give it a thumbs up get out there and go try it <laughs> nice so guys go check that out uh the game i've been playing and of course i was we were talking about last week i believe was Ori and the Will of the Wisps. This is a game that um, I'm not going to dive too much into its history because we talked about it on the last month of games you should play. Check this out. Xbox exclusive. Day one game pass. There's no reason not to. I was talking with Andrew like because uh, it took us a little while to get started and I don't like to start playing a game when we're waiting. But I was literally like Jones and I'm like, man, I just want to start like playing this game. Why, you know, it's great. The um, I'm only X amount of hours into it, and I'm already looking at this game, going, "Fuck yeah!" I um, I'm playing it on hard, so the battle than one so far. Um, yeah, because there's just already more to do. Like, there's already powers. There's already like as soon as I got that goddamn sword, I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> this game is mine." And um, so it's hard for me to say by leaps and bounds more than one, because one is a beautiful standalone game that is awesome. But number two is already shaping up to be... If it's anything like number one and it adds on, I know I'm going to love it. It's There's there's already a barter system in terms of what you can... I use barter, but you collect soul... Um, I don't remember what they're called. Whatever you collect. And you trade them in to get new powers. You can start upgrading them. You can start... Um, so not only do you get abilities, but you also get like passive things you can use. You get like a collection of three. So if you want to stick on the walls, do you want to collect more orbs? Do you want you know things like that that naturally happen versus other things of like, I'm going to use my sp oh, spirits and I get my 
butterfly that comes in and can shoot, or I can use a regeneration move that heals my guy. There's actual boss fights instead of running away from things, and um, they're not incredibly hard, but playing it on hard, if you get hit once or twice, you're toast, so it does take some skill. Um, it's, it's pretty much repetition. Dodge here, you know, jump over this, make sure you don't get hit by that, but as of right now, I am actually loving it. I can't wait for Junior to start playing it, because I know he went back and played he beat one, and then he, re he did redid number one on the remastered. The game looks beautiful. The storyline is all... It's got about, I don't know, maybe a 10-minute uh, like introduction where you're, you're kind of playing here and there, but it's just really uh, moving the story along, and your heart gets filled with all this happiness because you're like, ah. Oh. And then, obviously, the story needs to have a story, so you're like, ah. Oh. So Ori's story is one of regression and one of depression, and if you like platforms... I was telling Andrew... If it wasn't for games like Mario, like this game is one of the best platformers I've ever played because it's just so much more than a platformer, especially if you have an eye for art because I got to give props to the guys that do background stuff that most gamers, I'm not going to say everybody or even Andrew and I, don't notice. You know, there's plenty. How many set pieces do you run by in a game that you just don't even notice the attention to detail and right. the swaying of this or the crumbling of that? I had to. St I even stopped and just like took a picture of it. I was like, "Damn, this is a great looking game by Moon Studio that is so small and and I actually not even owned. It's not even one of the uh, teams that Microsoft acquired as first party. So the fact that they're still making this game just for them, I think time will tell, and I think eventually they'll come into the fold. But if you have an Xbox and you want to play a game, and if you have the pass, it's free. I would say check this fucking game out and. If you're just kind of streamlining, uh, streamlining the uh, campaign, it's not even that long. I, I I think you can smash the game, you know, depending on skill and how you are. I don't know. I'd say eight to twelve, and then if you're exploring or playing it on a harder mode, maybe closer to twenty. So I would say check it out. Um, I hope you do at least play with it. I would say at I least downloaded it. it. I say at least give it an hour or two, just so uh, we can talk about that opening cutscene. But that is a game I can't recommend enough to anybody. And as soon as I beat it you'll have my review on it. So make sure you follow our Instagram. I'll try it. I definitely need to. I think I want to go back and do the first one. I'm just fucking stuck on The Witcher. Dude, first, I can't wait for you to be done with that either. So, guys, um, with that being done, we'll skip riffs and let's just go to questions and we'll call it an episode. Yeah, so for sure. So let's go sure. into video game questions of the week. week. So our first question, actually... I didn't even grab that other one, so I'll, I'll go to the things if we have time for it. So, Jab Stab, which is why I referenced back to the beers that we didn't buy because it shows that you posted it nine hours ago. So, the beers we will eventually get from you were the Alaskan Amber, uh, the Sing Tao, Sing Tao, Sing Tao, Sing Tao, Sing Tao, Sing Tao, and the Red Stripe, all good beers. So, yeah, appreciate it, and those will be on the show. And you bet your ass, Missy. I hope they're good beers. And, well, Red Stripe is. I've had that. I can't think of the... Well, I'm sure an Alaskan Amber can't be terrible, and... Anything, I'm guessing that's a Japanese beer. So, the question is, if you could create your own game or remake an old one and make it better, what would it be? Type of game. I think I would make a legit free-roaming Pokemon world. Well, that. Who the fuck wouldn't want that? Yeah, no, a that legit, sounds pretty good. A legit one. Do you have yours? Because if not, um, I'll go first. I will say, the game at, at, that I would always want to make... Like, I don't so much of a remake because I think certain games lend themselves to to staying pure. But I've always wanted to make, and this is back, and Gino can attest to this, when I bought RPG makers and stuff like that, I've always wanted to make, like, a top-down Final Fantasy-style game, an RPG, that I get to make the characters. I get to invent the leveling up system. I get to create dialogue. I get to make the storyline. I get to create something memorable in terms of an antagonist and a protagonist and everything in between. Um, I don't think as a kid growing up, there was ever RPG makers as, as close as I can think that would ever do something like that. But we are living in the world of dreams. And I hear dreams is as close as you can get as of now to make whatever the fuck you want. People are making Crash Bandicoots and this and that and the other. So I think the tools are out there to do it. The only thing that sucks is I'm not 14 anymore. I'm not 18. I don't have a summer vacation anymore to take the time that something like that requires and it's unfortunate and maybe it's, maybe it will be something i pick up and just slowly start piecing together and in like six years have a game ready that you guys can play but my answer would be something fantasy something rpg and something closely related to 
um, like Final Fantasy VI would be something I would like to do. So, I took a piece from both of your questions because you said, would I like to remake anything? And my, I would love to remake Resident Evil 1 in the vein Resident of like what 2 Evil. or 3 is now with that over-the-shoulder, tight corridors, with the mansion, I already love Resident Evil Remake, the GameCube version, and of course the HD Res up. I think it's still an amazing, amazing game. Looks fucking absolutely beautiful. Speaking of amazing backgrounds, like he was just talking about. But if I had to make my own, I personally am craving and would want some want to make something Avatar, like the Last Airbender. Uh. But along the realms of maybe like um, well, we saw it like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, but with better combat though more i would say like maybe like arkham something along the arkham series or something like that but be able to cycle through my powers and right. this and that so i've always wanted to play something avatar that's actually good yeah and so Ooh, that'd be tasty i think that would be my go-to nice beautiful answer and i would like to play it so our last question comes from gamer guy and he asks if you if you guys had to keep just one game one game from the following genres. So the rest get erased from history. You get to keep one. And you had access to play on on any system at any time. So whether it be Super Nintendo, Sega. Uh, what would they be? And here the genres are. Your platformer to keep. Your RPG. Your fighting game. Racing game. Action. MMO. Uh, which is massive multiplayer online. Um, real time strategy. First person shooter. Good luck and congrats on 40 eps. That's a chunk of change of a question, my man. And uh, I got to say, I've got mine ready. I'll go first. You always go first. I'll go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Sure. So I would have to Why say, not? if we're doing platform, that as much as I love Ori, um, there's a lot involved in it, and it takes an emotional toll if you're following the storyline. I don't want, you know, if I'm having one for the rest of my life, I don't want a storyline. I want something I can pick up and play whenever just to have fun. And it falls under... Uh, do you want to garbage go... choice? Oh, sorry. I thought you were gonna... <laughs> Super Mario World. <laughs> do you want to go one, well, one, two, two, three, three? Or do you want me to do a list? Spoilers, guys. We'll do one, one because mine actually is Super oh, Mario is it? World. Yeah. I see. I was gonna say number three, and as much as I, I, I personally like number three more than Mario World. I think Mario World has the more playability in terms of the ex exploration and stuff like it's that. It's absolutely the perfect platformer. Yeah. I go back and I play Mario World once, like, every year. Sometimes even twice. And I always go through and beat it. I think three is harder, and that's why I like three. I like three. Everybody likes one, but, two, and... I'm yeah. saying three is the harder game, and that's why I like it. But if I'm playing one for the rest of my life... It'd have to be Mario World. Yeah. Mario World's got the better soundtrack, too. Oh, I would say look at you! Far <laughs> superior. Like the Spider-Man. Oh. So, the next one was your RPG. And I, I normally, I would say Final Fantasy VII. But again, if I'm not diving into something that has this big storyline that I want to keep playing for replayability, colors, sound, um, you know, the interesting storyline that was made just for this game. Super Mario RPG is a game that I absolutely adore it was my first game into RPGs, so it holds a special place in my heart, and that would be my RPG game. I thought you said interesting storyline. Oh, bro! Uh, my RPG would actually be Final Fantasy X. Nice. Absolutely love it. Fire soundtrack. Love every single character. My all-time favorite Final Fantasy. And why, I not, why not pick the X 2 remastered collection and get them both? No, I just want to <laughs> I think, actually, if I can get a quick gripe in, the thing that makes me the maddest is on this 10 remaster, like, every other game that you play, it's always like, okay, you do one game, separate elite achievements, one game, separate achievements. They're fucking combined Collective. achievements for 10 and 10 too. So I have to, like, grind my fucking ass off if I want to get, like, anything. Mm. So by the time I play this, I'm looking at spending, like, 100 hours to beat both fucking games. And I'll have a collective of, like, 350 achievement points. Dude, you gotta slow them down a little bit. Fine. <laughs> Next game was the uh, fighting game. Uh, I don't really play fighters. There's nothing I would I would pick. I would have a Street Fighter 2 guy. I love the Mortal Kombat that we've played. So if Punch Out falls under that category, then that's and I've mentioned this before. That's one of my favorite Nintendo games. If that is considered a fighting game, that's what I'm taking. I'll take Mortal Kombat any day of the week. I would say it's a franchise. One? No, it's no, a, one game. Oh, one game. One if game I if I had to choose any of them out of all of them, then one I, sticks around. I would take uh, eleven. The one we just played. Yeah. 
Nice. It, it would either be that one or it would be nine. I was gonna say but I would this say here, but that was last year. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, it'd be eleven or nine, but I would probably take eleven. Nice. The next one goes to uh, racing games. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of racing games, but one that I the probably the one I played the most with the most amount of friends were drinks and stuff and having fun was uh, Mario Kart, but the Wii version. That's the one I would take. I'm going to actually say Mario Kart, but I prefer Double Dash for the GameCube. The GameCube? I was almost kind of thinking, too, like Midnight Club or something like that, because I used to have a lot of fun with those. Rockstar, yeah. I, I think Rockstar actually used to make those. But, uh, yeah, I'd say Mario Kart Double Dash for me, if not followed by the 64 one. Nice. Uh, the next one comes into Action Game. Now, I, I, action's a loose term used these days, because you can be in action this and action that. Um, but I would say... My action game would be the new God of War that just recently came out. That game was fucking... I, I know I was just kind of... I mean, I'm a hypocrite in terms of games engaging in storyline. But that game was so badass. And I love Kratos. And I love the lore behind you know Greek and uh, Norse mythology. There was still so much I didn't do on my first playthrough. I would go back and I would keep that. That game was... That, not only is that game great game in the last five years. It's one of my top five games of all time. So I would take that. Uh, mine would actually be... So that'd be an action hack and slash, I suppose. Kind of have to cheat it a little bit. Depends on how you define it, but Wikipedia defines it as an action RPG. So mine is actually Dark Souls, and I would choose three out of all of them. Because it is slashing, you know, you're doing all kinds of action. I would say it's more... RPG. No, yeah, that's the point. I, I like it's, can, it's almost it. like a it's almost like a neutral, and you can kind of take action whatever way you want. So right. I kind of went more action hack and slash. You want to go action more RPG? I think that lends itself to that. Again, one of my favorite games of all time. So that's what I'll take. Nice. The next one is uh, MMO. Um, I never really fucked with MMOs too much. A little World uh, World of Warcraft back in the day. But if I had to pick one, um, I would probably see what Gino was playing because he I know he wants to dive into them, and I think the one he's been wanting to get into is the Elder Scrolls Online. So I would take that. I don't have one. I don't really play Skip, MMOs. abort. Yeah. Uh, the next one was uh, RTS, Real-Time Strategy. I'll skip that too. Don't oh, have one. big fan. I've mentioned it before, I'm sure, is Command & Conquer. So there's actually a new um, Command & Conquer remastered uh, that comes out on June 5th, 2020. It's got all the expansions, rebuilt multiplayer, that over immersive Rabbids? UI. Over what? Rabbids. Rabbids? Yeah. The that, Mario Rabbids? That's an RPG. That was an RTS? No. That was a turn-based tactical. Oh, tactical you know, that's RPG. what I'm thinking of is turn-based tactical. You know what? I'm thinking no, of RTS thing. is more like a, well, never, every, every, no, everyone, everyone's that. moving. Yeah, you know what it no, is. No, I know what it is. Yeah. I just... Like Starcraft. I don't know why and, this whole time I fucking had, I had the... Oh, I like a tactical that. one? Well, I, I, didn't, I don't play either, <laughs> so it wouldn't matter. Oh, yeah, anyway. Uh, so if you like the old Command & Conquer's, they, it's got all new uh, graphics, new bonus music and all this stuff, and it kept all those old cheesy cinematics, just a little up res. So Command & Conquer, I would take that any day of the week, and you don't have an idea. And the last one is the first-person shooter. Um, you can end it with this one. I'll go with mine. I'm going to take a cheesy way out because I don't really play FPS too much online. So if I can take the uh, Bioshock series... One, two, three, the collection. I'll take that as my FPS. That way I get three games out of it. Three of my favorite games. Uh, mine would actually be Call of Duty, but more specifically Modern Warfare 2. For me, that's kind of where the series kind of really took off for me. And it's also something that like I'm very close with like my brothers, my cousins, and my dad. So we still play Call of Duty to this day. And it kind of really cultivated with number two, but I felt like it really took off, took off with Modern Warfare 2. Nice. So those are the games we would pick, and I expect you to leave your list down below. But guys, that is the end of episode 41, and we are snailing our way to episode 50. So guys, hang in there, and a new contest will be mentioned soon, but not yet. So guys, until next time, my name is Craig Perales, and that is Manju Montame. Cheers. How much money do you think 50 Cent makes all that song still? How much does he make off that song? Yeah. Enough to get sued a thousand times and pay six baby mamas? I want to say he's one of those people that everyone says is like broke, but I don't know if he really is. I don't know how you can be. I mean, shit. Well, when you spend all your fucking money on I mean, like, yeah. Gucci, Sean John, and fucking baby but you're not, I mean, you're not broke on what you're getting. It's not like those things are dried up. It's not like the whale's dried up. It's, I get if you have a, like a gambling habit or a spending habit but 
Thor's got to be still making something. Uh, doesn't he have a clothing line? He's got to, but he's got vitamin water. When's the last time anyone even dressed like 50 Cent? When's the last time anyone drank vitamin water? Is that still a thing? I've never even liked those. <sighs> they taste like cheap Gatorades. You think the actual water sells out before vitamin water during this corona crisis? Well, that's, that's all people can get their hands on, yeah. I guarantee you that's going to... People are going to be so desperate they can buy vitamin water. I mean, he doesn't do vitamin water. He's just... I think he was just a spokesperson for vitamin water for like five minutes. Is that it? It can't be right. Well, whatever it was, you got a healthy chunk of change. Like, uh, I forgot who it was. I think it might have been Tyler sent me like a meme. And it says the CEO of uh, Lysol and Hand Sanitizer right now. And it's some Clean like... house. It's some like Persian dude sitting on the throne of gold wearing all gold with like 50 fucking chains. Oh. And like a sultan's hat. These, yeah, these guys that I work with, dude, they, they Lysol everything. And I'm just like, nobody comes in here. Like, it's just us. So... They're cleaning up though. Dude, I'm fuck. I'm doing my hands after like everything eggs. that I fucking touch, dude. I'm in the shot. Boom, boom. Are you? I'm sterile. Don't touch me, dude. Dude, last night. Even so, in like local places, like here or your house or. I don't know, dude. I'm just weird. So uh, my biggest one. So like last night, I was like, like Mika went to sleep. I think like six, seven. Like I, I was just super fucking tired. I didn't plan on waking back up, but I happened to wake up at like nine. It's so like, all right, I'm going to mm-hmm, get up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play The Witcher for a little bit. But I'm, like, hungry. So let me just make something small. So I made Top Ramen. I, I don't know Always how you make choice. Top Ramen. I make it in the microwave. Uh, I, I'm not opposed to that. But when I was living on, on ramen, it was, a, it was a stove situation. Well, I make it really good in the microwave to where it tastes as good as the stove one. How do, how do I know that? <laughs> and how do you know that? <laughs> Because, dude, that's all my mom used to have when I was fucking younger for, like, a while. Oh, so you're saying so you I perfected per- the craft. I perfected the craft to where I could make it, and I don't know if you could tell me the difference. And you I'm, might even say mine's better. I'll take that challenge. So, uh, I'll do that, and then I fucking take it out. And so, it's beef. And I'm like, alright, cool, I'm really looking forward to this. flavor? No, it's just all I had left. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, alright, cool, man, this is gonna be great. I'm looking forward to this. Add a shit ton of pepper to it. Because I'd been craving it since the day before because my brother was eating it when I went to my mom's house, my brother Matthew. And, like, you know, you just that smell gets stuck with you. Oh, yeah. So That's a, that's a, that's a lingering smell. So I'm like, all right, cool. I go to do, I start doing that, like, you know, with the packet so I can tear it open. <laughs> like you're fucking ready to take a dip? Yeah, dude. All I feel is fucking it sand open. <laughs> hitting me all over the fucking place. And it turns out the packet was one of those fucking ones they, like when they cut everything open with the box openers, they must have cut through the oh. fucking thing and they cut the seasoning. And so I had enough to where it would have been good and I mixed it and I'm looking at it and I was like, no, I don't want to get the Rona this way and I fucking threw, threw it away. <laughs> I'm not going to soil it. Uh, I think of Roger like on uh, American Dad. <laughs> yeah. I, was I was like, fuck, of all the other things I fucking do, I don't want to do this right now. I don't want to get the roan off a fucking box cutter at Walmart, so I fucking threw it away. Dude, at least you weren't wearing a white shirt, though. Dude, I was devastated. No one likes to waste rom, even if it is, you know, 58 cents a pack. I called your brother afterwards, because I, I, every time I go to look for Totino's, because they're always, he always has them because he makes them for grace in the Totino's pizza. And I, I end up, the, I, the pizza? I, yeah, I end up eating it, and uh, they never have it the way I used to remember it. And so I called him yesterday, and he didn't answer and I was like, fuck, dude, what kind, like, what kind of Totinos is it getting? And I found these square ones that are in a bag, and I guess that's how they come now. Because I haven't had them in a long time since they used to be circling in a fucking box. Have they always been circled in a box? That's what I thought, too. You buy it's, them, like, corn dogs now, like, in a plastic bag? Dude, it's like, dude, it's like a bag, and it's like a square, like the kind you would get at, like, school for lunch. That dude, that's all, the Rona, that's all the Rona left before us. I bought two of them, so I put them in the oven together, and I ate one and a half. I was like, ah. Oh. You should have, you threw that away, dude. <laughs> You should have flipped them up and did it like a big fucking crusty sandwich. Oh, I was saying, I was like, I was just thinking later on that night. After Are they personals away. or is it a, still a full pie? It's big, but I wouldn't say it's, it wasn't, it's not as big as the other ones used okay. to be. But I was thinking too, after I threw it away, I was like, I'm there going to sleep. I was like, man, I'm really going to regret throwing that away when we're quarantined for the Rona right now. Oh, the Rona's going to get us all better. We're running wild with the Rona. 